And thank you guys for joining us on Zoom or Facebook, whichever avenue you're here at. Um, this is going to be a string workshop with our Virginia Harp Center, Virginia show manager, show, Virginia showroom manager, Amy Roberts. And she's going to be walking us through tying harp knot strings, tying string harp knots, and putting the strings on the harp. Um, so I will let Amy take over. And thank you all for joining us. And here we go. Hey, everybody. How's it going, everybody? Uh, wearing a mask because I'm in a building with my other colleagues. So, you know, we want to be all safe and everything. So uh, awesome. Thanks for joining us. If you have something to practice with, like a little piece of rope or something, or a shoelace or a harp string, you can follow along. Otherwise, just watch and learn. We're going to do some stuff. So let me turn the camera around and we'll get started. Um, there it is. Okay. So let the camera focus here for just a second. There it goes. All right. There it goes. Okay. So you want to take your string and it's going to be kind of straight up and down. And then the first move you want to do is kind of make a candy cane off to the right. That's kind of easy to remember. And then we're going to make our first loop, which I'm going to cross over in front. Okay, so this part is in front. And then I'm going to hold on to that with my thumb and forefinger. Wow, it is not focusing. Sorry, folks. Okay. Then you're going to make a second loop with the long end in the back. Looks like a pretzel. Give it about a quarter turn. That's counterclockwise if you're keeping track. Flip it over the loop. And then pull the long end of the string. Kind of get your fingers under the knot and pull the long end of the string. And that makes your basic Harper's knot. You're going to need this knot for your larger strings, like fourth, fifth, octave strings. It kind of make it, makes its own string anchor. And we're going to do, I'm going to show it again. But let me show you, some people are tempted to do this like they're tying their shoes and they want to pull the long end of the string. So let me show you what happens when you pull the long end of the string. Okay, the harp, the knot comes completely out. So let me just adjust the camera here a little bit. There we go. Okay, so let's do that again. So this is basic Harper's knot. Light is terrible. Okay. We're going to do candy cane to the right. Cross that over the front. And then hold that on, hold on to that with your thumb and forefinger. And don't let go. Then we're going to make a loop around the back. Give it a quarter turn. Flip the loop over, the second loop over the first loop. Get your thumb under the knot and pull the long end of the string. Looks like that. And the finished product, here's one I rescued from an old harp. Uh, there we go. Doesn't want to focus. That's what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so. We've got our basic Harper's knot. Let's do it one more time to practice. So, candy cane off to the right, cross it over the front, thumb and forefinger. Make a second loop with the long end away from you. Give it a twist, put it over the first loop and pull that. 
Okay, if you don't do the twist, you put it around the wrong way, it'll just come out. So you need to give it a little twist, put it over and pull it. So for your smaller strings, you need to use a string anchor. This is my little uh, pretend string anchor. So pull out your knot and I'm gonna show you how to tie the Harper's knot with the string anchor. So open up your string, make a candy cane off to the right, cross it over and hold it with your thumb and forefinger. Now I've got my string anchor. I'm gonna kind of put that behind this loop and hang on to it. See, it's there. Okay, then make your second loop like you normally would. Put it over the first loop and the string anchor and pull that tight. Okay, and the whole reason for the string anchor is that on the skinny strings, the knot will pull up so small that it will get stuck up in the hole in the heart. And that is the devil to get out. So you don't want that to happen. So let me show you what a string anchor looks like. We use little bits of uh, cut up fifth octave gut strings from harps that we have restrung. And then the Kamak harps use a little quarter inch in diameter, one inch dowel. And I like to cut up my string anchors about one inch. Uh, leather shoelaces work, uh, paper Q-tip sticks work. I don't like to see nails, but I've seen it. Don't, don't use that. Uh, also rolled up pieces of paper or uh, just about anything. You just don't want you to get your strings stuck. So The, the harp, the first octave strings, which are really super duper skinny, require an additional step. And that additional step is to repeat the second loop. So I make that loop with the long end away from me. I loop it back over the first loop and the string anchor again and pull it tight. If you wanna be really sure, you can do it as many times as you want. Sometimes I'll have a stubborn string that just keeps pulling out and I'll do a third hitch. Doesn't matter, two is usually good. And this is for first octave nylon strings. You will have to do that. And while I'm on the subject of first octave nylon strings, you will need to secure these up at the top too. So here is my uh, pretend tuning pin of learning and knowledge. And here's how you're gonna secure that first octave string. So I like to pull it up, harp is on this side. And then I take the end of the string and loop it under the tuning pin in between the neck and the string and pull it out to the side. So that way, when I start pulling the string up, it crosses over itself. And that will lock it down and keep it from slipping. Another trick for that is to, and I'll show you when I put on a first octave string, is to go ahead and measure some slack for the first octave so you have a couple of wraps that will also keep it from slipping. Let's see how it's crossed over there. Okay, I'm gonna do it again for you. Okay, so you've pulled your gut. I like to get my tuning pin hole straight up and down. I take the end of my string and I loop it, loop it between the string and the neck of the harp and then pull it out to the side. This takes some, uh, so I'll hold it with these fingers here 
And then when you turn your tuning pin, it'll go ahead and lock down. Good job. Okay. So let's do this with a real string. Because real strings are not quite as uh, cooperative. So I've got about some sort of third octave string here. And another important thing with real strings is that they're kind of rigid a little bit. And I kind of like to bend them up about the bottom three or four inches. Just kind of bend them so that it's supple enough to make your loops. All right, so I'm gonna make my candy cane off to the right. Ooh, get that business out of there. Okay, I've crossed it over the front. Okay, got my string anchor. I'm gonna hang on to that. Okay, and then I'm gonna make my second loop with the long end away from me. Flip it over and pull it tight. And don't you know, I dropped my string anchor. Guess what, it happens to everybody. I got another one here. Just stick it in. Doesn't matter too much where it goes. Just stick it in there. And I know a lot of you have trouble with the string anchors falling out. And I've got a little trick that I like to use for that. And this is my favorite pair of second hands. This is just painter's tape. So what I do is if I've got one that's fallen out like that, is I will take a piece of painter's tape and loosely put it on there so I can, so that when I pull it up in the heart, then I can remove the painter's tape after it's in there. And that keeps the string anchor from falling out. Okay, anybody got any questions about tying the knot before we start actually installing strings on an actual harp? Questions, problems, you guys are awesome. All right, well, let's get set up over here. We're gonna go over here. up and pitch this down a little bit. Okay. So we are gonna, I am gonna move this over just a little bit. Put on a first octave string. Okay. So I'm just gonna take, I'm just gonna remove one of these strings so I can show you how to do it. Oh, so the first thing I need to show you is that I, I don't ever tie the knot first. I poke it through the harp. So let me angle this down so you can see. Actually, we'll just come back. Okay. So I actually poke the string through the harp first before I tie the knot. And this is where my second pair of hands comes in handy. If your string is short and you're afraid you're gonna pull it through, just take this masking tape, tape it to the soundboard and that keeps, keeps me from pulling the string through. Okay, so I got my string anchor. I got my first octave string. So I'm gonna make 
my loop, put my string anchor in, make my second loop, pull it in there. Oh, see, I didn't do it right. Loop, string anchor. There it goes. Okay. Then the second loop. Remember, this is necessary for first octave strings because they're so slippery, they will just pull themselves out. Okay, that's nice and tight. I'm ready to pull it up into the heart and begin to install it. So let me change the camera. Get right on top of the work. And can you also turn your harp so that we can see you thread it? Yep. Well, we're gonna. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I turn my tune and pin so that the hole is straight up and down. and poke the string up and make sure I, it's going through the lever and on the bridge pin where it's supposed to go. And for pedal harps, you need to make sure it's going up through the discs. Now I'm gonna take the end and thread that between the string and the neck, like I showed you on the paint br brush of knowledge and learning. And then I'm gonna pull this remnant out to the side. I like to do a couple of things. Oh, my tin and keys here. Okay. I like to measure about for first octave strings about three out three strings worth of slack. So I'm pulling it back like a bow and arrow about three strings. And I'll hold that with my thumb and hang on to the remnant out here with these fingers. And then I'll start winding. And then hopefully you can see that's crossed over itself and I'm winding it in towards the neck. You know, if you would use please a red or a black, we could see it, but we really can't okay. see the clear one. All right, here goes a black string. Okay, let me just trim this off. Uh, and just a note about uh, nippers or clippers. Uh, string cutters work good for, uh, you know, these 45 degree cutters work good for all the gut strings. I would go ahead and spend some money on some good German hardened steel ones for your base wires. If you buy a $5 cheapy pair, they'll wear out, but these will work good on your base wires. Okay, let's do a black string. Thank you. All right, black string. Uh, I'm gonna poke it through the back of the harp. You might not be able to see this on this uh, camera angle. I'm gonna tape this down to the soundboard so I don't pull it through. I'm gonna tie my knot. Second loop. Okay. And pull it up through. Okay, this is tuning pin. Okay, so I get the tuning pin so the hole is straight up and down. Okay, I'll take the end, 
the remnant and thread it through between the string and the neck of the harp. And then I'm gonna pull this out to the side. Measure about three strings worth of slack with my thumb. And then start winding. And then there it is right there that it is crossed over itself. And by measuring the slack, I get about three full winds. There we go. And it's on there. Cool. All right. Now, let me set up and we'll do a base wire. Give me just a second here. Hi, I have a couple yeah. of questions for you while you're setting oh, up for the base yeah, wire. Yeah, hit me. Yeah. All right. So one person asked if changing the strings is the same on a pedal harp as it is a lever harp. Yes, absolutely. Exactly okay. the same. Okay. And then let me scroll back through. Sorry, I lost it. All right. All right. So that yes, does one absolutely need a string anchor? Uh, in the, the for the smaller strings, yes, you do because if you don't use one, it will get um, the knot will pull up so tightly that it will get stuck inside the heart in the hole inside the heart. Uh, let me see. Let me see. So I use string anchors from like about fourth octave C on up. They're absolutely necessary in the, the upper third, the second octave and the first octave. If it's a skinny string, you need a string anchor. Because if you ever go to remove that string, it will not come out or it will um, pull all the way through the hole in some cases. So string anchor, yes. And again, you can use pieces of cut up larger string, leather shoelace, cut up the paper uh, Q-tips, roll up a piece of paper. Uh, I've seen a lot of things that, that work in a pinch, but do use a string anchor for your high strings. You got any other questions, Katie? Yeah, so one more before we continue on with the wires. Yeah. Um, do you have to unwind the tuning pin? Um, before putting the string on? Oh, that's a great question. For dusty strings harps, you do because they are screwed in there like a screw. But for other harps, they are just a uh, tapered tuning pin. I'm gonna take one out for you. Most tuning pins are like this. So it is, uh, skinny on one side and fat at the other, and it's in there with friction. So you don't need to worry about unwinding those. But if you own a dusty strings, you do need to unwind it. Otherwise it'll poke too far out this way. That's a good question. What else you got, Katie? All right. Is there a trick for when you're tying the harp knot on a string that's particularly stiff and is a little, a little bit difficult to have malleable, is there a trick to make it a little bit easier to actually tie the knot on those? Yes, let's show you that. Let me get the hammer back down. I'm gonna switch around. Okay, nope, just kidding. Okay, so here's a piece of old uh, fifth octave string that's, you know, it doesn't really want to bend. So um, I like to leave about the bottom inch and a half uh, stiff so that it looks, looks pretty. But about, the about this much of the string, I'm just gonna start kind of bending it like this to make it more supple so I can do my loops. See, now it's more bendy. Sometimes I'll attempt 
the knots and then I have to go back and bend some more of it. But let's see how we did. So do my loop. Yeah, see, like I didn't do enough. I want to do a little bit more. Okay, do my loop, do my second loop, give it a quarter turn and get under that knot. And then it should be a little better behaved. Any others? Yeah, is there a trick for getting the painter's tape off of the string anchors once it's in the harp if you have to use that to keep the anchor in? Oh, um, yeah, just uh, just real. I just put it on there really loosely and flat. So when it gets pulled up into the harp, it comes. It'll come right off. See how loose I had it? It fell right off. So I just put a little little piece on there, uh, really flat and lightly just enough to keep the string anchor from falling out. Okay, anything else? Um, I'm keeping a list, so I think the rest of the questions we can do after the base fire, if you're ready base to. Base fire? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get set back up for the base fire. Okay. So first, removing a base wire is a bit of a chore. So you want to hang on to it and unwind it. While you're unwinding it, you want to pull down or some heart technicians tell you to pull out. So I'm pulling down quite a bit. And it's just because this makes like a curly cue and it's really hard to get out. But we got it, it's all good. Uh, some people cut right down at the bottom. I just cut the curly cue off so I don't damage the harp when I pull the base wire through. Now, the good thing about base wires, kids, is you don't have to tie a knot. They come with a ball end already. So, but that does mean you need to get down inside the harp and pull it up through first. Okay, and then you want to pull it up and make sure you've got it all the way. I've done it before where I haven't pulled it up tight. And then when you're tuning it, you hear it creaking up through the heart. And you don't want that to happen. Okay, same with the other strings. I like to have my tuning pin hole straight up and down. And that makes it easier to thread it. Now, an important thing to know about base wires. See, I've got it pulled up tight here. If I start tuning it, it is gonna break because this is a metal string and it is not stretchy at all. So it is super important to measure a ton of slack for these guys. I have two ways for you to measure it. I like to pull it back like a bow and arrow, one octave, so this is a G string, pulling it up to the next G string, plus three strings. That's how much slack I want for a base wire. Remember, metal strings are not stretchy at all. You need a ton of slack. And this will give you three nice winds around the tuning pin. The other way, the quick way, is I have it pulled up tight, measuring three of my lady fingers above the string. See that? And I grab right above that. Now we can check that if I drop it down, 
and pull it back, it goes back one octave plus three strings. Uh, men with larger fingers, this might not work for you, but uh, you'll find a measurement that works. But if I'm tired or if I'm in a hurry, and I am, I'm always in a hurry, I, I use the, the finger technique. But uh, if, I, uh, if I'm not sure of myself, I always go and check one octave plus three strings. So once I've measured my slack and I'm satisfied with that, I'm going to bend the space wire over. So go ahead and crimp it over. Okay, let me see if I can get in here so you can see. And you want to pull down on the string while you're winding it. So let it catch. And pull down on it while you're winding it. Okay, so it gave us three nice lines. And then I'm going to clip it off with my nippers. And ladies, if your hands aren't strong enough to do this, don't worry about it. Just get it started. And then if you bend it back and forth a couple of times, the metal fatigue will get it. Maybe this was kind of a skinny string to do that on. Okay, but if you do bend it back and forth, it'll, it'll eventually give way for you. And that works on the fatter strings. Okay. So that's a ton of slack. For fifth octave strings up here, I like to pull them up as tight as I can because they're super fat and super stretchy. I'll show you on one. So I'm gonna poke this guy through the back of the heart. And tie my knot, get it supple. Loop and loop. Okay. So now this is going to go in. And I'm just doing a nylon string because a gut string is like $30 and I'm so cheap. I'll pull it up tight as it'll go. Uh, for gut strings, you don't need to uh, lock it down like we did on the first octave string, but this, since this is a nylon, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So it goes between the neck and the string, pull it out to the side. And then I'll start winding. Push it in. Okay, and this is so, this is pulled up really tight because this is so stretchy. This is going to keep winding. So, fifth octave strings I pull up tight as I can. Fourth octaves are pulled up, but like not as tight as I can. Third octaves, then I start measuring a little bit of slack. And second and first, I do that three strings worth of slack. Okay. So anybody got questions? Yeah, we have a few. So for the wire strings, how do you mm -hmm. get the bluntest end possible when cutting the wires? Uh, ask that again, Katie. For the wire strings, when you cut the excess string off, uh -huh. um, a lot of times they're very pointy and sharp. Ah. Is there a way to make it more blunt? Um, I like to see my cutters have an angle and I will lay that angle. It's not this way, but like right on here as flat as I can. 
because I like to cut it as close as I can. And it's kind of somewhat the luck of the draw. See how this guy's kind of pointy sticking up? I can lay my cutter here and cut that flat. If you need to, if it's like hurting some, if you could get a piece of sandpaper. I've never done that. But if you get a good cut and you let, you've laid it flat on there, that usually does the job. Right. And how often should the base wires be changed since they have a very low breakage rate? Ah, that's an excellent question. So they'll hang on in there for decades, really, but they'll become incredibly dull sounding. And changing all your base wires is the least expensive way to zip up the sound of your harp. So like this harp has five base wires, 50 bucks. We'll put new bass wires on it. They vibrate when you're playing, even when you're not playing them. So if you have new ones, it uh, will improve the sound of your harp and it will also sound nice and crisp and uh, clear. When you put them on, you'll be like, oh man, why didn't I do this earlier? So strings in general for the casual player, you should change them about once every three to five years. The pros who are playing a ton and wearing the strings out, like about once a year. Um, but you know, we see people who play on their harps for 10, 15, 20 years with the same strings and still enjoy their harp. It's fine, really. But if you're looking for optimal sound, I would change them out uh, fairly regularly. All right. And on the same note, how often do you see gut strings break? What's a normal breakage rate for the other strings? I tell my customers it's not unusual to see two to four strings a month, especially in the spring and the fall. Uh, it, it's, just, it's just a cost of playing a gut string harp. You want that nice, dark, rich sound? Uh, it, gut is animal intestine. It's a natural product, and it, it just breaks. Uh, so, so sometimes some harps break more. Sometimes you'll go a whole year without breaking a string. But two to four, I would say, would be normal, in the normal range. All right. And then after you change the strings or have a new string that you put on, how long does it typically take for it to start settling and really stay in tune? And are there any mm. ways to get it to settle faster? Okay. Okay. Um, I would say it takes a, I just did a restring and I tuned it three times a day. I had it right next to my desk. I tuned it three times a day and I got it good and stable in about four or five days. It was like decent after three, but then it was real stable after four. But I mean, I was paying attention to it. I've heard things like rubbing the string and making it warm and pulling it up or pulling it up higher. I don't like to do that because I, I feel like that's gonna stretch part, the warm part of the string more than the cooler parts of the string. But there's gonna be a situation where you break a string in a performance and you need to get that bad boy going in a hurry. So uh, one tip is if you put a new string on, leave a tail so you know which string is the new one that way in between tunes, you can pull it back up, but there's really no substitute from uh, just constant tuning and actually playing it a little bit, tuning and playing. And it takes a few days. All right, and then another great question. Um, so sometimes when you're putting new strings on, um, especially for the line and Healy harps, which have tapered pins, mm -hmm. um, when you're tuning it, you'll find that the tuning pin is slipping and going back is there a way to stop that from happening? Yes, so again, these are just in here with friction, skinny hair, fatter over here. So some of them need more persuasion than others. So you put it in there with your tuning key and sometimes you gotta put your hand on the neck and really twist and push in there hard until it seats. 
uh, if uh, sometimes the holes have gotten so worn out that you may need to order an oversized tuning pin. And the other trick short of doing that, if, if you have pushed and twisted this in as hard as you can and the, the string is still, the tuning pin is still going backwards on you, you can get some, uh, uh, try some violin rosin. It's a little bit sticky. Put that on the, on the rough part of the tuning pin and then shove it back in. But you should feel it be kind of nice and stiff. And also for people with tapered tuning pins, don't just be passively tuning. You do want to keep them seated in there. So you want to be giving a little bit of inward pressure as you tune. I'll be tuning new harps in the shop and I kind of got to back the string off. I can shove it back in. This one's really tight. And it's a good idea if you're doing that to loosen the string so you don't break the string because huh, I've never done that before. <laughs> All right. And then how many strings can you take off the change at one time? Um, I've taken them all off. You don't want to do that on the dusty strings because the neck and the pillar are just held on there with string tension. And the whole neck and pillar will come off from the body. But um, yeah, I mean, when the harps go back to the factory for repair, like if they have to uh, put a new action on it, they just take all the strings off of it. But uh, tip, my custom is uh, I'll take all the base wires off and then put all the base wires on. I'll do it an octave at a time. And that's usually because we're working here in the shop. And so I can remember what I did last and that I don't strip the whole harp naked. But sometimes we get really dirty harps. I have to take all the strings off to clean it. See, so I think you can take all the strings off. I don't think it hurts anything, but uh, I usually do about an octave at a time myself. Okay, and I think maybe time for one more question. And that is when should you change strings? So before regulators, if you're having a competition, when should you change your strings before that? Ah, okay. That's a great question. Uh, the technicians like it if you put your strings on at least two weeks before, that gives them time to settle. Uh, it is hard to do a regulation on a string that just keeps falling flat. Uh, the technicians will do your restring and regulation that same day. You might not get the greatest regulation from that, but if you put your strings on about two weeks ahead of time uh, for the regulation, that should work A, really good. Before a competition, oh boy, I would think at least three to four weeks because you do not want to be in there and have your first and second octave strings just sagging. I, I would get those on uh, and that's tough because you're practicing a ton. So, but uh, yeah, changing like right before a competition is a terrible idea. I would do it at least a month to three weeks beforehand. All right, thank you. I think that was the last question that we really have time for. Thank you very much, Amy. Um, th this was a very informative video. And for all of you that are asking about a recording, it is going to be immediately available on our Facebook page um, right after this live session ends. And for those of you who cannot access via Facebook, I will be editing the video and having it up on YouTube available as well. Um, so you'll be able to rewatch, get all these great tricks and try tying those night strips those knot strings um, over and over again with Amy while pausing the video. So, so, all right. And thank you, everyone. And we will see you next time. Thank Thanks, you, Katie. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you.